He started out the season playing, you know, really well, and then we acquired James, and he's had to be the one to sacrifice. Just tell him to stay ready, and his opportunity is going to come. Nashawn Lee Bones Highland, born September 14, 2000. Bones Highland is averaging 6 points and shooting 31% from 3 for the 23-24 season, along with career lows across the board including minutes played at 13 a game. He hasn't played in a game in the month of February and only 4 games so far 2 months into the year causing many to wonder why the Clippers aren't playing their sharpshooting, ticking time bomb that was on his way up before he stepped foot in the building. Highland is a player I enjoy watching because of his childlike energy on the court and natural feel for the game on the offensive end. Unfortunate because to begin the season, Bones was scorching, averaging over 16 points and shooting over 44% from three in the first four games in under 25 minutes per. The Clippers were 3-1, albeit against the Magic, Spurs, Utah, and Portland, playing better than they have maybe since they went to the Western Conference Finals in 2021, losing only four games in their last 20, and looking like the trade they made for James Harden earlier in the season is working out better than it looked early on. Coach Tyron Liu has went as far as to make it clear to Highland informing him personally after the trade that he won't be seeing the court for the foreseeable future as he focuses on the rotation he sees fit going forward. Highland is 23 years old in his third year in the NBA since leaving VCU after his sophomore year where he was taken in the first round 26th overall in the 21 draft. A fast turnaround for a guy doctors told wouldn't play basketball again after tearing his patella tendon jumping from a second story window his junior year in high school that kept him out for six months. He made the jump March 25, 2018 after smelling smoke while watching the Kansas vs Duke Elite Eight game in his bedroom and talking on the phone with a then teammate. He realized the smoke was actually fire and the only way out was going through one of the windows for his only hope of survival. By then, neighbors were already surrounding the house, awaiting his jump and were able to brace his fall but not save him from hitting his knee on the brick porch below. Still trapped inside were his grandmother and two baby cousins, only one of them surviving after being rushed to the hospital. Dealing with tragedy, he did return to basketball with a heavy heart and extra chip on his shoulder, thinking the only way to mend his family and honor the loss of his two family members he still wishes he could have done something to save is to give basketball his all and become his city's first NBA draft pick since Joey Graham in 2005. Since then, his basketball career has been on the fast track only spending two seasons in college and looking like a promising player to watch early on into his NBA career before being traded in just year two, now facing a career-defining point where it can go either way from here. Talented player, but for these reasons, his new team isn't using him. What happened? Let's talk about it. Salute to party with Trail for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get him. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Nashawn Highland is a 6'2 point guard shooting guard from Wilmington, Delaware, nicknamed Bones obviously for his physical build, but it didn't hinder his on-court play as by his junior year in high school he was one of the state's best players. He averaged 27.8 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 5.8 assists, and 4 steals per game that year, being named first team All-State for the first time. As a senior, he was once again dominant in similar fashion, adding the State Player of the Year to the trophy case, along with his second first team All-State selection. He was recruited by Kansas, Michigan, and Georgetown, but chose VCU because of how they treated his tragic house fire, making sure staying close and offering support to he and his family. He says the coaches felt like father figures he didn't have and couldn't see himself playing for any other team. He shot 44% as a freshman from three, going from 9 points per game to 19 points per game by the end of his sophomore season. He was named the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year before announcing he'd forgo his remaining two years of eligibility to enter the 2021 draft. His dream came true, drafted by Denver 26 overall in the first round. 
Stun number one, falling out with Denver. I still remember Bones Highland having his biggest moment up to that point April 24th in the 2022 playoffs first round, Game 4 versus Golden State, hitting three threes in a row to give his team a 17 point lead and saving them from being embarrassingly swept by the eventual champions. They'd go on to lose the next game and the series, with Bones then going 0 for 5 from 3, but you could see since then the talent was there and so was the opportunity to work his way into an important role on the team. A team that would win the championship the very next year and one he started the season a part of before being traded mid-season. It was a shock to see the Nuggets give up one of the only players on the team that played with the energy and fan-favorite charisma to make you excited what the Nuggets could be. No, he wasn't starting and playing heavy minutes, but he was in the rotation and in the right role for the team as just a rookie and first half of his sophomore season. But at some point, there was a fallout with the team, beginning with Bones being frustrated with the minutes he was getting and having to split them with Michael Porter Jr., who was drafted just three years before Bones as a highly invested in former lottery pick. The frustration wasn't one-sided as the team felt they needed more defense from the shooting guard position between he and Michael Porter Jr. At this point, understandable on both sides until Highland shocked everyone and requested a trade from the team mid-season. A decision had to be made to keep Porter Jr. and grant Highland's request or give him more minutes and move Michael. As GM Calvin Booth explained it, Porter Jr. was already locked into a $30 million deal and while they both were me guys that didn't play much defense, Porter was 6'10 and one of the best shooters in the league shooting over 40% for his career from deep. Highland was traded February 2023 for two second round picks to the Clippers who currently aren't playing him for weeks at a time. Without the encore development from the team or their G League affiliate, Bones Highland's growth is literally being stunted. Stun number two, the art of adding more. One slept on skill, all you young hoopers out there that aren't happy with the playing time you're getting need to learn is how to read the room and understand what the team already has and what the team could use going forward. That means understanding how you can help the team other than ways already provided, mostly scoring. All teams have at least one guy that can score, and on the NBA level, any player on any given night can score 30 if given the opportunity. But what most teams in all basketball and the NBA don't always have are guys willing to sacrifice their offense in order to focus on the defensive end. A lane left wide open with all the tremendous scoring currently in the league. Bones Highland has always been an explosive scorer since high school and really much more a shooting guard the height of a point guard. But I wish he understood the other end more as he does have the energy for it, the long wingspan and athleticism to stay with guards of today. But in the NBA, the Nuggets and now Clippers have grown to know him as a non-defender thus putting his minutes on hold and a huge reason he can't crack the rotation. Along with issues on defense, Bones averages 2.4 rebounds and 2.8 assists for his career when as a player his size, those numbers are expected to be up a little more in his favor. It's not only the numbers, but when you watch the Nuggets play and Clippers when he was playing, Highland always swings for the fences and attempts to make the big play and not always the winning play frustrating even some of his teammates at times. Some call it a black hole. It's tough because in order for him to even make it to the league from the small VCU, he kinda had to be a bit of a ball hog. It's just unfortunate he's not on a team his role can expand in that way. Outside scoring and energy of course, he doesn't add enough and it has him in the position he's in. Stunt number three, the James Harden trade. I know everyone still remembers Terrence Mann's face the day James Harden walked into the locker room for the first time and many, including Mann, seemingly thought he would be the one to have to sacrifice his minutes, adding another future Hall of Famer to the already three the team currently had. But Mann's minutes have actually increased with James and Bones turned out to be the one with the most to lose because of the trade. 
Tyron Liu even told him and the media just as much, saying with the addition of Harden, Bones will have to remain ready for his opportunity, literally telling him he won't be a part of the team's rotation for the foreseeable future as the Clippers give it their hardest push at a championship with four guys born and raised in or near LA who were all perennial all-stars or MVPs at some point earning the right to play. Lou made the decision based on a working rotation he found in November 2023 that has them firing on all cylinders ever since. This, more than any, is literally the reason Bones Highland isn't playing and at least Tyron Lou was even with him and not keeping him in the dark as to why. All in all, I like Bones Highland and his story of what he had to give and lose to get where he is, but this is how it can go when the grass isn't greener on the other side like you thought. The Nuggets won a championship the season he was traded and the players voted not to give him a championship ring, showing a burnt bridge and situation I thought was great for him. Like Lou said, staying ready is now key because I do believe he'll still be a solid player in the league, just needs the right situation. Salute, much respect, but for these reasons, his growth is being stunted. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth and I'm out.